It's time to welcome our first guest of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. He's a number one best-selling author. He is an award-winning comic. He's been on the BBC, he's been on the ITV channel, and he's been on Channel 4. And on Thursday, he was on Sky News. And his career is about to peak at heights never to be reached again by appearing on the Sunday Social with me. He's here mainly to talk about a virtual comedy night that was online last night and that he performed on and is, was, was responsible for setting up. I wrote too many words here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to welcome to the show Dave Chawner. Welcome, Dave Chawner. Hello. Oh, it's lovely to be on. It's uh, lovely to hear your voice again. Hey, listen, it's great to have you on, my friend. We've worked together before, and it's a pleasure to have you on BBC Radio Cambridgeshire okay, tonight. Uh, mainly to talk about comedy, but knowing what happens when you and I talk, we tend to drift off on various tangents. Were you responsible for this uh, online uh, sort of comedy festival that happened last night, Dave? I would love to take all the credit, but unfortunately I'm not. I'm a mere pawn in these things. Basically, it was run by the people that put on the uh, free festival in Edinburgh and obviously that's been taken away so they've moved it online and and how was it performing online last night and and the reason i ask that is is as someone who's done two comedy stand-up gigs in my life you need an audience to bounce back off so how was it performing i mean presumably you performed in front of your computer so to speak in front of a tv like a camera yeah, in, in my tiny little flats, like in the kitchen. I think the weirdest thing about it is that people sort of say you don't get that kind of uh, talk response sort of thing. You know, you can't hear the audience laughing, but to be honest, I'm not used to the audience laughing anyway. So it was it was generally quite normal for me to have that response. Come it's, on. More, it's more like <laughs> rather than performing. Very odd. OK, but no, you, you do need that audience feedback, Dave. If you, if you crack a great joke, there's nothing better than seeing the audience laugh and that, that just gives you that little bit of something to, to, to keep on performing. So it must have been incredibly hard last night. It was really odd. And also, the, the weird thing is, here's a little view behind the curtain. You could only see the other comics that were coming up next. And obviously, like, comedians are very hard to make laugh. So you just see this sea of bored-looking faces, which is quite off-putting as well. So there are, definite, there are definite things that you've got to kind of iron out. But there are some people that are absolutely brilliant at it. And the hope is that the whole Edinburgh Fringe will go online. So people are doing that like, hour-long sort of storytelling stand-up shows. And I think that could work really well. I mean, is this... I, I had a musician on uh, a couple of weeks ago and he did... Uh, a kind of an online concert with his band. The, the, the four of them managed to get together. They they managed to perform together uh, at a venue, socially distanced, etc. So they they were able to perform in the, in the same room. But they had they were performing online. I think they had an audience of about a thousand watching them. Uh, but there was no one in the room, what you know, physically watching them. I mean, do you think that that, that this is going to be? you know, the way forward, certainly for the next few months, for comedians, for musicians, to be performing online. Uh, because, you know, it's going to be a long time until venues get up and running again, Dave. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. So comedy, like, stand-up comedy was, like, one of the first things to close, and it will, rightly, be one of the last things to open. I think it's kind of treading water for now. And you know what? You can do it, and you can do it really well, and I think it's exciting. I think it's performing in a different kind of way so you know you don't have that interaction of like oh what's that shirt and stuff like that but you've still got the chat function you can still i mean genuinely i thought this was brilliant i think you might like this charlie like i was hosting the show yesterday and i said there's going to be a prize for the person who's watching the furthest away and someone wrote in well i'm about eight foot away from the tv does that work? that's great yeah that is brilliant isn't it and you do, you do, you know, it is great when you get a little bit of a uh, bit of audience feedback. Um, you're on the comedy circuit, you, you know, a lot of comedians, etc. How frustrating has it been? I mean, it's been frustrating for us all, don't get me wrong, but but not being able to perform and, and you know, get out there night after night, week after week, meet up with your friends, your fans, etc. How frustrating has that been? I think it's been, I think it's been really sort of frustrating because obviously, you know, sort of a lot of comics are sort of solitary people anyway. You don't really get to see people. There's not an industry as such, like you don't work in an office so I think a lot of people have really struggled but then I also sort of try and put that in the larger picture of you know people are really struggling out there generally but you know what I think like one of the nicest things that has happened about lockdown is the sort of unity and people coming together and I read an amazing article the other day of like really big professional comedians that have been like nominated for the Perrier and stuff that have just decided to like get a job uh, delivering food parcels and stuff like that and I think that's I've got to admit one of the things that's really got me about this whole thing is how people have knitted together and just tried to pitch in and I think comics are absolutely part of that 
Mm. And what have you missed about performing? Is it, is it the actual performing or like you've, you've alluded to, is it, it's the kind of the social bit? Is it a bit of everything? Well, I don't know if you get this, but because I haven't done it for so long, I'm genuinely terrified. It feels like starting all over again. Like yeah. when I get back on that stage, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm going to, I've forgotten everything that I knew. I've forgotten all my set. It's so odd. And I was so nervous last night before doing the gig it was it was genuinely like starting all over again um can people watch the gig back i know it, it took place last night uh, can people watch back it, uh, online again somewhere dave it's a brilliant question so basically it's on twitch.tv forward slash free fest online and the idea is it's absolutely free so the free fest was set up to keep it affordable for acts but also for audiences so you don't buy a ticket you pay on donation what you think the show is worth so you th- if you think it's rubbish then it's absolutely free so that's quite nice isn't it oh, Okay, so you so you can actually so you watch a comedian and then you will either you know pay something or nothing at all. So you can pay per comedian. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I always do in Edinburgh as well. It's a lovely model. Was, it's starting to spill out another comedy club. That would scare the life out of me. As as in, you know, I've done my performance and I'm sitting there watching. Is anyone is anyone paying for that? Was I was I that bad? You do like genuinely. I once had uh, this. Honestly, happened as well. I once did a gig and someone said, and it happens. You stand there with a bucket and people go like, "Have you got change?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, okay." Like you know, I can I can break a tenner or whatever. He literally said, "Have you got change?" And gave me what, a one pound coin and i was like honestly mate that's fine you just just keep it just go it is but then i think it's quite nice because it makes you up your game as well and i think that's quite nice because you know what everyone's struggling economically at the moment i think it's a kinder model than paying like 10 15 quid before you've seen someone actually pay what you think they're worth at the end so if they're rubbish it's cost you nothing other than time Nice. Uh, have you got any more sort of online uh, gigs planned, or, or, or I mean, what, what, what's the f- sort of feel in in the comedy circuit? Are there going to be a lot more of these things cropping up online for people to watch? It's really, it's a good question because I think there's a lot of split in the comedy circuit because a lot of people that d- sort of tend to riff, so that's you know, like asking the audience like, oh, what do you do for a living and stuff. And generally, sort of tend to hate it. For some people, this has really worked out quite well. Some people have really enjoyed it, and some people are absolutely flourishing, like brilliantly. I saw. Jen Brister, who's done like Live at the Apollo and stuff, very good interactive act. Saw her the other day. She did a brilliant set that was, uh, you know, just via computer. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, mixed feeling about it. But uh, the Free Fest is hoping from the 7th to the 31st of August to do uh, hour long shows that people can watch for absolutely free. And then they can donate to the performer if they think that they've enjoyed it and they want to support that person, which I think is, is a brilliant and very magnanimous model. When people find out you're a comedian, uh, Dave, is is the first question they uh, say, or the first thing they say to you, go on and tell us a joke. <laughs> yes, it's always that, and I, I always worry, and I'm always like, no, Mum, I won't do this again. So it's kind of, I, I always just lie. I think that's one of the things, whenever I get in a taxi, I'll just lie, and I say, oh, you know, I, I, I make I knit mittens for kittens, or something like yeah. that, because it's just one of those jokes that people instantly see as an affront. Yeah. Uh, listen, we, we're celebrating the fact that pigeon racing starts again tomorrow. Uh, do you know any pigeon jokes? Because I've, I've looked for some pigeon jokes and they're all on one theme, and that is that how pigeons coo. Uh, so, for instance, uh, I, think, I think pigeons are planning an uprising, Dave. And you say, why is that, Charlie? I think pigeons are planning an uprising, Dave. Why is that, Charlie? Because they keep saying coo, coo, coo. <laughs> and the theme the, the, I've missed so the, much. The, the, the theme of pigeon jokes is all about uh, is all about cooing so do you know any uh, pigeon jokes off the top of your head I thought you were going to say do I know any pigeons no I don't unfortunately not I was trying to think you can't are they foul what type of bird um, are they okay now I like that maybe we could make up a pigeon joke of so, so yeah pigeons are foul okay I was going to say there's something in the idea of being pigeonholed like you know there was oh. cast pigeonholed is that pigeon. a Okay, why could the uh, why could the pigeon never get a job in acting? Because he was always okay. pigeonholed, <laughs> or something like Great. that. Yeah, yeah, I think that works. Yeah, it's snip, snip, and, and, and it will get there. But is, I mean, when you're sort of thinking about jokes, writing jokes, coming up with an idea, I mean, is that literally the process there? You know, think of a pigeon. What do you associate with pigeons? I mean, there's pigeons obviously live in pigeon lofts, so there's a potential for some kind of pigeony, attic-y, lofty gag along the lines there. Is that is that the thought process when you're coming up with a, a, an idea for a joke? 
Definitely. Well, funny enough, I'm trying to write a stand-up comedy course at the moment for people to like regulate their mental well-being, like trying to sort of use comedy in order to, to sort of keep more mentally healthy. And that's exactly the process. And it's great for creativity. So you can sort of there's loads of different ways of doing it, but you can do like what they call a mind dump. So, for example, pigeons and then you sort of circle that in a uh, on a piece of paper and then you write everything that comes to mind. So, yeah, pigeon hole, pigeon laughs, birds uh, and, and then all of those different things. Uh, and then you would try and sort of like slam them together. There's no real great alchemy in it. Anyone can do it. And it's, it is so much fun to do. Like, as you know, some of the worst jokes can be the, the best uh, and some of the best can, can sort of fall flat. So I, I just think that's brilliant. And, and those little observations can kind of just keep your, your mind ticking over. But yeah, I think I, I highly recommend anyone, if they want to do it, they absolutely can and should get involved. You must miss it. Um, no, because I absolutely died on my backside twice, and and, and and that's it. You know, this is why I do this job, because it's, you know, yeah, all right, it's, it's kind of sitting here, you know, saying funny things sometimes. But no, stand-up comedy, never. I could never do that again, not in a million years. Oof, no chance. I always say I've got no dignity to lose, and I think that's something... It really does give you, like, a, a second skin, and you do have to be quite difficult, but it's kind of like dealing with that. And I honestly think that you should do it again, because I think, <laughs> speaking from all of the listeners, I think everyone would love to see that, me included. Well, I'm not sure about that. Thank you, that's very kind of you to say. I forgot what my next question is now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, here's my final question for you. Um, I'm obsessed with people's uh, bookcases at the moment. Obviously, a lot of people are on TV doing interviews. I saw you on Sky News the other day. Um, what did you have in your bookcase? Because it looked like you had a load of DVDs or computer games. Didn't look like a load of books in there, it Dave. I, you're, you're absolutely bang on. I've got obsessed with the PlayStation at the moment. There are other consoles available, but I, yeah, look, sort of Crash Bandicoot. All of my books are just things like Alan Partridge. It's a weird mix because, yeah, I've got the Alan Partridge book, I've got the Taskmaster book, and then uh, Becoming Michelle Obama. So it's a very weird mix there. Excellent. And, of course, you're an award-winning author yourself, my friend. Oh, bless you, yes. I'm still sort of trying to flog that. It was a book all about about uh, how I had anorexia as a teenager and sort of trying to use comedy to talk about a very serious subject and obviously mm -hmm. using that uh, sort of sensitively. And I originally wanted to call the book The Real Hunger Games, but they wouldn't allow me, so I decided to call it Weight Expectations instead to sort of try and use comedy to make something that makes people quite uncomfortable a lot more uh, open to talking about. And is it OK to use comedy with something serious? I mean, obviously, you know, you, you, you've been through your own issues when you were a teenager. You wanted to sort of combine a comedy side to it with something serious to raise awareness. Is that OK? Is that cool to, to mix comedy with something serious? Absolutely. I think it depends on the intent. And like, if the intent is to help educate, inform and entertain people, that should be. And you know what? One of the things that really gets me about mental health is it should be used in comedy because I know one in four people has mental illness, but four in four people have mental health. And we always talk about bad mental health, but good mental health is about laughing, is about having fun, is about enjoying. So instead of sort of talking all about the negatives, celebrate the positives and celebrate good mental health, which is having a laugh with the mates and i think that is really important listen you're a top man thank you so much indeed for coming on the show just remind thank us you. where we can find uh, the comedy gig from last night again dave absolutely it's online twitch.tv forward slash free fest online brilliant stuff dave chawner ladies and gentlemen thank you very much indeed dave for coming on the show dave chawner what a lovely guy i love dave love him to bits